Well, hello. Nice to see you. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and four chickens. It's a little bit later in the day today, so I hope the light's going to be okay for me recording this. It's lovely to see you. My friends are here staying with me. They were due to come a little bit earlier, but we had Storm Eunice and they couldn't travel. So they're here now. So what I, I wanted to talk about at the minute is just to show you a jumper I've finished. Uh, it's top for Tommy, you know, my great grandson, and I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it. Hiccups. Hiccups. It's a Women's Institute wool. I love the way the cable goes up the whole of the sleeve right up to the shoulder it's a beautiful design so then because it goes up the sleeve it goes over onto the back and then on the front it looks like that really pleased with it very soft and yes, too big for him at the moment, but it'll fit him soon. So that's what I've been doing. I made this project bag to keep it in, and I'm very pleased with that. It's Elmhurst fabric, as you know. Um, I mentioned, I think, last week or the week before. And I just quilted it along the bunting, just to hold it in place, which is really nice. So yeah, so that project bag has been made with a little jammy dodger on as a zip pull and the the sweater. Then my friend has come to stay and she loved the fabric so much that um, her friend bought her a fat quarter and she said, oh Pen, will you help me make one? She hadn't ever made a project bag before and so I helped her make one. And we made that yesterday. She pointed out that at the side the bunting is exactly right, which was rather a fluke. And she's used a beautiful blue for the bottom and the inside is the beautiful blue as well. When she went to Ali Pali last autumn, she saw this blanket and she saw it in real life and she really fell in love with it. The colours that they did it, it, she just fell in love with it. It's it's not a typical granny square. It's a blanket and cushion in naturals, bamboo and cotton, which is the softest, softest yarn and um, doesn't split. It's really beautiful. So she's doing that. And the each square measures three and three quarters which hers does. She's had to adjust the crochet hook. It says three and a half, but she's adjusted it to three. And she's chosen all these beautiful colours. Uh, she's got a lovely, lovely uh, choice. There's the wool. She's, oh, it is the softest. I can't describe it. Style craft. Doesn't split for her. And the white, I think the cream, there's the cream. That is cream, not white. It looks white on screen. I'll show you the one she's done. She wanted the bag. We made it bigger than Erica Aunt's pattern. And there's her first square. And so soft and beautiful. It's beautiful. She taught herself to, to crochet um, in October because she was inspired actually by my daughter Kim because Kim taught herself, as you know, Kim wasn't a crafter, but she taught herself to crochet and I taught her to quilt over, you know, all the lockdown periods and, and yeah, she's a regular crafter now and she loves her crochet. And somebody said to her a couple of weeks ago, crochet's not fun. 
Find yourself something fun to do. Well, <laughs> my friends and I got a little bit miffed at that because if you like crochet, crochet certainly is fun and making things certainly is fun. So in reply, my friend who's staying with me put up a picture of this. She found it on on the internet. And uh, she brought, she's brought with her one for, one for all of us, but we went round to see Mum today to have a coffee and we all wore our Don't You Tell Us Crochet Isn't Fun hats. So I'll put a picture up here. We had a jolly good laugh and Mum thoroughly enjoyed it. I wanted to talk about photographs. My sister-in-law sent through to Pete um, a couple of photos of him when he was a little boy and I thought how lovely it is to have photos actually to hold them in your hand I, I greatly appreciate them and I'll show you them she sent them through they're lovely here they are this is Pete well if any of you have seen I know a, a good few of you have listened to his stories and watched him cooking and uh, yeah you know Pete now well this is him as a little boy and funnily enough he was looking at his school reports and he was reading them you know with our friends here and uh, he said here we are and it said number in class 50 yeah, baby boomers, just after the war, a lot of babies. So they're lovely. It got me thinking about the sayings we have that are in our family that come from photographs. And my grandson, I think, I can't remember how old he is now, I think he's 27. And I went and picked him up to take him somewhere. And I was standing him just to put him in the car. And I said, what have you got in your bag? He's got a big bag over his shoulder. And he said, he, he used to have a piece of black muslin, called it his shushy. And I said, what have you got in your bag, Jimmy? And he said, my shushy and my dummy and my bouncing ball. Here he is, my little grandson. That's not the one I knitted socks for, confidence and balance. That's his brother. This one's my shushy and my dummy and my bouncing ball. And so that's become a bit of a saying in our family. What have you got in the bag? My shushy and my dummy and my bouncing ball. And his little sunglasses on. And of course his baby under his arm. What a gorgeous... I just had to say stand there and his jelly beans. Do you remember the jelly beans? I just had to say stand there and take his photo. I asked him if he would mind if I put up his wedding photo. And they chose their wedding day. It was um, 2018. They had the choice of the week before the 22nd of September or the 22nd. And she said, oh, I like the two twos. They look nice together. So she chose the 22nd. The week before was late summer, you know. It was the most exquisite day. We all said, oh, let's hope it keeps up. And then on their wedding day, it chucked it down the whole day. The whole day it chucked it. But they're the kind of couple that, do you know what? They just didn't mind. She had her welly boots on underneath her wedding dress and we had a great time. That's their wedding photo. Their thanks. So he's still good fun. Yeah. Shushy and your dummy and your bouncing ball. So that's enough waffle, isn't it? Now is the fascinating fact. So I'll see you the other side. Researchers have found that tiny scales on the lantern surface of some fireflies 
form a corrugated pattern, somewhat like overlapping shingles or tiles. The scales tilt up at one end by just three micrometers, less than one twentieth the thickness of a human hair. Yet this tiny tilt lets the lantern shine almost 50% more brightly than it would if the scales formed an even surface. Could that concept improve the efficiency of LEDs, which are used in electronic devices? To find out, scientists coated LEDs with a corrugated surface similar to that of the firefly lantern. The result? The LEDs emitted up to 55% more light. Physicist Anik Bay says... The most important aspect of this work is that it shows how much we can learn by carefully observing nature. Well, I love that. To think that they can just make that fraction of a difference and you get 50% more light from an LED. So who knows? That might have uh, you know, paved the way for better lighting. So now I'm going to put up Mum's bit. Uh, she's talking about when she had my brother in 1956. And for those of you that are new, she does talk about earlier on uh, in previous episodes when she had me. And she lived in uh, rooms, you know. It was, I was born in 1949. And so after the war, you know, there's a shortage of housing in London. And they lived in, oh, it was, she'll tell you if you go back, but dire it well for for me it would be dire my dad made a sink and put it on the landing and um it wasn't good at all anyway because of the situation there the nhs in england in great britain had just come about and the year before 1948 and she uh, they looked at the rooms and said, no, you can't possibly have baby here. So she was uh, admitted to um, a London teaching hospital. And that London hospital had been, w without the NHS, silver service. It was the most, you know, private hospital. And, of course, the NHS had then taken it over. But all the silver was there, all, all you know... And as she says, her words are, I was treated like royalty. She looks back on it and says, it was fantastic. Of course, not everybody had that, not by any means, but she, for some reason, had that beautiful experience. Whereas when my brother was born in 1956, no. In fact, I think she's blocked quite a lot out. She had to get in the ambulance, go through all the snow and the smog, uh, to um, to the hospital, which was quite a way away in Hackney. It wasn't a good experience. She can't remember what happened to me, whether I stayed with my grandparents or if friends. She just can't remember. All she knows was I was taken care of and obviously I was with Dad. I can remember the night my brother was born, but I can't quite remember where I was. Uh, but then, of course, I remember her coming home and having baby and I was six and a half when baby was born and I adored it. I adored every day of it. I didn't want to go back to school and I think mum did too. It was lovely. But what made it very hard was the circumstances then and also um, the weather. And so I'll let her tell her story. She's moved from Harlow, which was a beautiful modern flat. After all the bad housing they'd had, they managed to live in Harlow lots of cupboards and it was beautiful but now they've moved back to Tottenham and um, you know while it whilst it wasn't too bad yes it wasn't wasn't that brilliant either but yeah she was happy and she had her baby but the bit she's going to describe now becomes a little bit hazy which is the first memory for her that I have heard her speak about as being a bit hazy so I'll see you the other side of that. All right, so we're starting with um, your new baby. Yes, good morning all. Uh, the beginning now of the next episode is Christopher being born. I started having pains Sunday evening 
and dad rang for the ambulance because then you uh, you could be picked up to go to hospital then to have a baby and I was able to go to hospital to have my second child because they had checked with the little flat and decided there wasn't the convenience there to have a child at home because in those days you only had your first child in hospital it wasn't till quite later on that you were allowed to go in for a second child right. and the only hospital they could fit me in was not a local hospital but it was Hackney Hospital which happened to be near to granddad to um, dad's mum and dad yeah. so in a way although it was a long longer way from from Tottenham. It was a journey for you. In yes, Labour, it was a journey, it, and also it was such a rotten, rotten night. It was very misty, and it was horrible. Thank goodness it wasn't like the thick fog that we'd had in previous years. Yeah. Because in those, when the, those thick fogs came, the bus drivers used to have to walk in front of the bus yeah. to help the bus along because the drivers could hardly see through the yeah. thick fog. Well, we, we looked it up, didn't we? And in 1952, the fog was so bad that if you needed an ambulance to go to hospital, it was you couldn't call an ambulance. You had to get yourself to hospital. How they... No. Yes. And all transport stopped. Everything stopped. And thousands in London died. Thousands. Yes. Sulfur yes. dioxide, all from like the coal yes, fires, fires and all of that. Yes. So that was 52. We're now we're talking about January the 9th in 56. 56 yes. Nothing had changed. The Clean Air Act came in in the summer in 56. So you were facing that winter the same as 1952. Yes. And in December the 9th um, of 1950s, Five, which was just a few yes. weeks before, obviously, January yes. 56, there was another, what they called pea supers. And the post office had said, please post your post now, immediately, because we won't get it delivered for Christmas because of the fog. Mm -hmm. So there you are, getting in an ambulance in this ghastly weather and, and tootling off and having this baby on your own. Yes. I, so I got to the hospital on the Sunday evening and Chris was born Monday about, about lunchtime. Right. And uh, it was a completely different sort of hospital to the one where, where you had been born in uh, no university college. No, no, it was uh, completely, completely different. Yeah. And... Um, I think it was only Dad that was allowed to visit. And you can't remember I was much. There, no, I was there 10 days, and it was just a long, long... It seemed to me just a long, endless yeah. time yeah. To, to be in there. I was so pleased yeah. to be home. So December... So January the 9th. Yes. So I, as usual, used to get up in the night and come and sleep in your bed. Yes. And squash up in one bed is what I did. I remember it. And um, I just got up, came in your bed, and you weren't there. I hadn't heard a sound, though. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, I'd heard the front door go and you get in an ambulance. Not a sausage. And I said to Dad, I can see it. I can see it. Where is Mum? And he said, she's gone to hospital to have the baby. And I remember being furious with him how dare you just lay in that bed while mum's having the baby you should be doing something i was six and a half and so he said come on get into bed so i got into bed and we went to sleep we went to sleep and that was that i don't remember i remember the excitement of having been told you had a baby the 10 days i was in hospital was was such a uh it seemed such a long, long, long time yeah. to me that um, what all went on yeah. while I was in there yeah. is 
I don't remember much about it no. really, dear. Funny, so, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, how funny how some memories are yes. so strong. Yes. You know, you talk about going up to Scotland, you know, and yes. all of that in the war and hiding yes. by that hedge. Yes. And, but the birth of the baby, sorry, yes. Chrissy. Yes. It's sort of, um, yes. it's just the birth I, of the baby. I think that Dad took the, all the instructions about uh, looking after you yeah. um, from everybody, you know, what yeah. to do and how yeah. to do it. And that's what, that was that was him that, looking after you and planning and yeah. doing things. And he, of course, he had to go to work yeah. as well. I, I remember, though, I'm sure I must have stayed with Nanny and Granddad because yes. I remember Granddad yes. saying, um, Ethel, go and get some ice cream. This is a celebration. And we had a yes. brick. You know how you have yes. those long bricks, different yes. colours. And I can remember him cutting this ice cream on at the table. And it, it was just yes. joyful. Yes. Baby yes. was born. I think yes. I must have been there. Yes. And, of and of course, I couldn't wait to see baby no. when you're six and a half. Yes. And it was quite exciting. Yes. So here you are in the depth of winter. Yes. And when, it was a horrible winter. Right. It was one of the worst winters that I can remember because it was snowy and it, there was snow, sludge or it was freezing cold freezing and of course cold. we only had just yeah. a coal fire yeah. and of course housework then was only a, a carpet sweeper and uh, yeah. days were busy from early morning till late at night with cooking and looking yeah. after baby and also then clinics right you, you were able to take baby to local clinics then and you had orange juice that was very uh, new in then bottles of orange juice which you watered down and made a bottle thick. Uh, thick. it was thick yes gorgeous and um, rose hip syrup yes. vitamin c yeah and there were all all sorts of other things when you went to the clinic they yeah. would help you with any problems you had or queries or yeah. Or Which anything. was newish, really, yes. wasn't it? Yes, Very, that was, you know, that that hadn't long been. Uh, yeah, life had changed then as yeah. regards having babies. Yeah, which was a big help because you met other mums yeah. there. Yeah, and you made friends, and uh, it I was, remember yes. being sat on the pram. So I was six, so I must have been heavy sitting on yes. that pram. You had a pram seat for me. Yes, and so. I mean, you wouldn't have a pram seat for a six-year-old now, no. and I suppose you don't go on long walks no, now. In the no, no, because people didn't yeah, have cars then. No, you that's know. right. But I remember honestly sitting on that little plastic yes. seat and um, and eating the bread that you just bought in the bread um, in the yes, bakers. That, well, yeah, there was a lovely little baker's quite near to us. Pick, pick, pick. Yes. And I remember you saying, now don't eat yes. that, there won't be any no. left, you know, and baby being in the back. It was jolly hard pushing. <laughs> jolly hard pushing, yes. it must have been. Yes, and because as I said, the weather wasn't always no. that great. You had to ra be wrapped yeah. up well. And, and you've got all the nappies. Yes. But I did have a washing machine, yeah. a little washing machine then, which was marvellous. Yeah. Plus the washing machine with the ringer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. So life was changing. Yes. You were a busy mum. Yes. You you had some nice friends locally. Yes. And I really did have some yeah. with John and Evelyn and yeah. Len and Peg and yeah. the Dennis's next door. And they were dad's friends too. Yes. So you oh, shared yes. them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so there was always people around. There was yeah. always somebody there. Yeah. Because so. you must have missed your mum having baby, oh, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, then. So, so, cheerio. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm getting some lovely comments and I pass them on to mum and she really does appreciate them. It's been such a treat for her to be able to tell her you know her story and for you to enjoy it and of course it brings up other memories for you i know i had a friend say oh she remembers when her mum shopped in sainsbury's from last week and the butter and the sugar was all weighed out and uh, of course it was because it was all rationed and it depended on how much you had in your ration book as to how much you could buy but 1956 now 1954 rationing ended so now we're in 1956 and things are a lot easier so now it's time for the film and it's going to be a little mishmash 
of all different things, our friends bought a tortoise. And uh, when they bought it, it was the size of a 50 pence piece. I mean, genuinely that big, the size of a 50 pence piece. And I'm going to put up a little bit of film uh, to show you because they brought him. His name's Toby. A uh, little bit of film and also a little film of our walk and just round the block again as per usual. I might put a little bit of up, up of mum with our hats on. So I'll see you next week all being well. Do take care. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, I appreciate it because without you joining me, I would be talking to myself and I don't fancy that much. So I'll see you next week and take care. Bye. So would you like to explain the ingredients? Okay, we've got chuck steak, beef chuck steak. Okay. We've got chopped onion, chopped celery and chopped um, carrot. Celery and carrot, yeah. onion, yeah. Here yeah, we've got bacon. So what kind of bacon do you use when you do this? Well, I usually use an um, Italian one. No, an little, Italian little squares, yeah, but you had it. some bacon in the fridge, so you thought yeah. you'd use that. Well, yeah, so yeah, yeah. okay, well, rather well, a lot of bacon there. It looks. Yeah, there is quite a bit. Oh, you chopped tomato with a few a bit of that. Okey doke, and some paste, That's white, white wine. wine. That's it. And stock. Chicken stock. Chicken stock, and so I'll put all the measurements in the bit down below, so that you can see what he's used. Yeah. Okay. Righty ho, so I'll show you as it progresses. That's the bacon. You've got brown in it. Not too brown. Brown now and put the onion in there. Now you cook this in the slow cooker, don't you? Yes. Because it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it now. Right. If you haven't got a slow cooker, then you just cook it on the top in a simmer. Yes. Just go away there. You're going to huh? let that well, just soften down. down. Then put You're going to let that soften down. I'll come back then. So you put the beef in? Yeah, I put the beef in. It's a little cold, which is quite handy. Just to break it up. Yeah. So you've got the carrot, the celery, the bacon. Yeah. Oh, making a mess. No do the drop. Oh, you can't cook without making a bit of a mess. Right. Otherwise you're not cooking. You're okay. microwaving. Okay. <laughs> I like microwaving. <laughs> We're just going to let that brown. Yeah. I'll come back then when yeah. it's brown for me. A dollar. That's organic tomato puree. Yeah, Stir that in. I notice how small you've cut your veg up. Yeah. Do you think that's necessary? Yeah. Definitely. Right. So chopping bigger veg. No, we're no. Not. Looks better, doesn't it? Looks like a... Yeah. 
For you, that's easy. For me, it would probably be a nicer dice or, or doing it in the... That's white wine. White wine, yeah. Not a sweet one. No, 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 dry. A dry. Shame's long for me like that. Okay. Turn that down now. Let that reduce a bit more. Get the alcohol burnt off. Right. Now I haven't seasoned any of this. Okay. And the reason is you don't know how salty the bacon is. Yeah. And of course you have you we have to use salted butter for you. Because you can't take, because you have to have a special butter, so you have a little taste after. Yeah. So okay, that's, that's, that's reduced a bit. Yeah, and I'll just put a little bit of stock in. A little bit of stock now. Yeah, just to be you know, And that is. You're it. just judging your stock, you're not going to pour all that in. But because you can always add, but you can't. Yeah, you know, okay. Have a little taste, see what it tastes like. Yeah, no, but I don't think it needs any more salt. No salt? Because some pepper, some pepper. Because the bacon was salty. It depends on your bacon, doesn't yeah. it? And you use black bacon because you had it. Black bacon, yeah. Often you use... Well, I usually use the Italian... The little square uh, Italian... Um, little bits, that gives it another flavour. Another di different flavour. Right, now you can put a bit of that big in there. Okay. Which I will do. I can find the nutmeg salt, can you? Um, Try just not a to touch. touch. Just a touch of nutmeg. That's it. Lovely. Right, so we'll come back. He's going to put that in the slow cooker. So here we are, all done. I think in the slow cooker it took about two hours. But simmering it would maybe take an hour, oh, wouldn't it? You just do it until You do it until what? How do you know soft. if it's done? It's not... Soft, not chewy. That's what our granddaughter just said. Oh, granddad, your bolognese is not chewy. It's lovely and soft. So we're putting this in now. We're ice going... cream boxes. Ice cream boxes because we put it in the freezer. And uh, that's enough then for two meals. More than that, really. More than that, really? Yes. Okay. Well, there's enough room for four. Well, that is two meals, isn't it? It's four of us. Yes. Well, that's... that's a good four, isn't oh, it, though? Absolutely. Would you say thanks very much for that, Pete? Sure. Oh, what do you want to say then, Mum? Well, well, I'm just getting used to my new hat. Yeah. I mean, it was very, very kind of Heather to, to bring it. Yeah. And I chose white because I've got grey hair, but really, I needn't have worried about it because it's covered up my grey hair. Ah. It hurt. You could, yes. have, you could have gone back to dark again. Yes. Right? yes. Would you yes. like to try yes. the dark one, Mum? I would suit you. Come on, where's the All right, the then. All right, let's go. All All right. Right. I'll try the white one, Mum. Right, there we are. It does transform you, Mum. Oh. Oh, I think that's better. That gives you a bit well, more colour. That does. Yes. Yes. Now that takes 20 oh. years off you, Eva. Yes. Right. Yes. That, well, yeah. then, definitely. if that takes 20 years <laughs> off, then yeah. I definitely can do the Chattanooga Choo <laughs> We've been singing that this morning. Oh, me boys. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Give me a try. <laughs> <laughs> we got the words up on Google. 
I think, is that all right? That's better. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's nice. It. Yeah, I that's, think we had <laughs> And don't let anybody tell you that crochet, crochet is, is not is boring. Fun. Exactly. Yeah. Crochet's not fun. No, yeah. I know. That's Can you believe it? Well, 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 people. I have just got to prove it now, Kim. Yeah. That I've got to try and crochet. Yeah. And just put that all to one side because that's not true. Crochet's lovely and I'm so envious of all of you who can crochet. Yeah. And I never could. No. I bet you could now because you've got YouTube. You could watch it on YouTube. Yeah. That's what we all do, oh. Mum. Get it up on YouTube. Watch, watch it. Watch it. Times yeah. when you get the hang of it. That's how... Heather's learned, mm. you? Yeah, crocheting along with people. Rewinding it, just so yeah. many, oh, 50 times anyway. You've got everything you on right. here now, Mum, haven't yeah. you? Guess yeah. what? We've got news. Well, Pete cleaned the house before they came, spotless, spit spot in the kitchen. And when we went in last night to wash up, we thought, oh no, we can't face it. Spotless. 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 Spot not, a, not a spoon. No. Sitting there, no. absolutely spotless. It just cleared as he went. Yeah. So we're hoping it's a new thing. Yeah. But he's yeah. turning over a new leaf. Yeah. He oh. nearly trod on the tortoise. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> the he did. carpet shop. And we all went, it? oh no. <laughs> and he went, I saw oh, it. I saw, I saw it. it. I saw it. <laughs> Straight cruising, headed for bruising, watching out for number one. You gotta slow down, look around you, son. Today is just today and not tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you.